All right, so I've gotten some acceptable um, acceptable levels on my bias, and I want to show you what I did in case you're building one of these kinds of amps and have a problem. So um, you'll see right here where this yellow and red jumper are. Um, I've actually cut the resistor. There was a 56K resistor there, and that's the uh, fixed bias resistor. So all I did was I cut the center out of it, and I've got the leads there, and I've got these wires attached to it. And these wires come down, and I've got them attached to, currently, um, two resistors. One is a 20K, and one is a 5K. I'm sorry, 22K and 3K. So I've got 25K there, and I've just got them bridged together, and it comes back up, so it's in circuit. It'll probably be a little noisy, because it's hanging down across the tubes. So I've got 25K sitting right there. Um, I put in this pair of uh, tongue sole tubes, and we're going to check and see what we get when we turn it on. So let's do that. I've got my meter set to DC volts. So let's turn this thing on and see what happens. Okay, let's get some lights. There we go. Okay, we're going to watch our voltage climb up here. And this is going to be off of pin 8 on the rect rectifier tube and pin 3 on the first 5881. Pin 3 goes to the output transformer. So it's climbing up. I'm going to let it stabilize here. Gotta let those tubes warm up just a little bit. So I'm gonna call this 1.58. Okay? Now, just to prove that this works, I'm gonna take these two leads out here. Let's do that. And I'm gonna plug the leads in of this bias checker, right? I've got these tubes in. I'm going to plug these leads in one at a time. There's my red. There's the black, the common. And I'm going to change this to milliamps, or millivolts in this case. And you'll see we're currently set to AC. We have to change that to DC. And I've got um, 34.2 millivolts, which looks really good from a bias perspective. Okay? So I now have my, my amp in a good place. Let's go over to the calculator and see how that number works. So remember, we got 1.58 going from the rectifier tube to pin 3. Let's see how that looks. All right, so we're going to put our voltage drop in, which was 1.58. And the other tube was 1.57. I didn't do that on camera. And you'll see that it takes my plate current from uh, to 33.7 and 36.2. There's my plate voltage. My dissipation is 15.3 and 16.4, and my average is 15.8. It's a little bit low, right? If you look here, a 5881 tube, 100%, 23 watt dissipation, 70%, 16.1. So I could really go up a little bit on that resistor. I can go from 25K to 26K, which will probably bring this into the um, dissipation range of probably about 17 and a half. Um, matter of fact, let's add a 1K resistor just for fun and see what happens. Be right back. Okay, so this is where we landed. Um, 1.64. Off camera, I, I did another measurement. Um, I had to tighten up my resistors. They weren't making good contact. So we're landing at 1.64 at 25K. And that's going to bring me at 16.5 dissipation, a little above the 70%. What I'll do now is play the amp and see how it sounds, because that's really the rule here. You can't go by the numbers all the time. You have to go by what it sounds like. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to play it, see what it sounds like. I did order a, um, a 25K uh, bias pot. that I'm Actually, I, it was a 10K, I'm sorry. I'm going to install that in the amp, and I'm going to put a, you know, a, either probably a 20K resistor in there with it or a 22, so that I have a little bit of flex or flexibility if I need it. But um, that's going to get the snap where it needs to be. I still don't understand why uh, it didn't work correct with the 56K because that's what's supposed to be in there. 
but I guess these things were not exact science back then. So, um, so that's where we are, and uh, I'll continue playing with this thing. I've got some cleanup in there to do, and um, we're in a good spot at this point. So I've solved the mystery somehow. <laughs> anyway, this is Ron. All right, we're going to do a test here and see how it sounds. So uh, let's let's do it. Alright, so I uh, got done playing it. I am hearing a little bit of a, a buzz or a rattle in there. Uh, it's either going to be one of the speakers are loose a little bit, something has to be tightened, or it could be the, um, <coughs> the piece of plywood in the front that mounts to the case with some screws. I have to tighten that down. Um, or it just could be a, a speaker that has a bad voice coil that's rubbing. So I'll have to look into that. I'll disconnect one speaker at a time uh, and, uh, and see if the problem goes away. I suspect it's just going to be a loose speaker. So uh, we've got this thing biased uh, pretty much where it should be. Next step is going to be to, um, to wrap up the connections inside the chassis. Uh, wait for the, uh, the trim pot bias resistor to come in so that I can install that so it can be adjusted. Install the nameplate on the front and then we're, we're close to being done. So um, the next video will be the wrap up one. Uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, you know I was able to um, to get the resistor values changed and get the amp working pretty decently. So thanks to all of you who made your suggestions. I appreciate it. it seems to have worked. I'll see you later. This is Ron.